Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name's uh, Doug Waters, and we've also got Richard Butterfield, the other lecturer uh, here as well. Uh, just to let you know, uh, this session is obviously now started. It is going to be recorded, uh, and you will be able to get uh, the session again back on uh, using the website. Uh, if you have got any technical problems, if you wiggle your mouse down towards the bottom of the screen, it will bring up uh, a little section and one if you've got technical problems, please put it into chat. If you've got uh, any questions, please put them into Q&A. Right, uh, guys, we will just go through this. Uh, we've got a few slides and uh, myself and Richard will be speaking all the way through. Thank you very much. So at Brinsbury, we've got a uh, 540 acre uh, farm uh, that we access daily. Uh, the classrooms are based on the farm, which makes it quite unique. Uh, the farm is obviously a commercial working farm that we access. So the students are learning on a farm that is producing milk, meat, everything for the industry. Um, the classrooms, we've got two classrooms that are near enough identical, uh, and then we've got one computer suite, we've got Wi-Fi throughout, uh, we've got a we've got dairy shorthorn and Ayrshire cattle of about 100 and, uh, about 160, uh, which will then, they uh, calf in the autumn and in the spring, and then we've got about 200 uh, clean uh, sheep that will lamb in March. Now, to get to Brinsbury, Brinsbury is in the heart of West Sussex. Uh, it's got excellent transport links. We have got designated uh, bus services that run up from Chichester, from Shoreham and from Crawley uh, that just bring our students to the college. Uh, and also, if you're coming by train, uh, we've then got a shuttle bus system that will take you from Paulborough Station up to um, up to the college and it will obviously be in the morning and then again uh, in the evening as well. Now, Richard, would you like to start this slide for me? So, good morning everyone. My name is Richard Butterfield. Um, I'm one of the other lecturers, agriculture lecturers at the Brinsbury. So basically, uh, why is agriculture a good place to work? So, um, the courses uh, at the college are really wide ranging. Um, and the careers are the same. So um, you could be working indoors or outdoors with farms. Um, you can end up working for a contractor. You can do livestock work. Um, you can go off to university. Um, many students uh, work abroad. So it's a very, very wide ranging. Um, and what we find is a lot of people ask this question, do I have to come from a farming background? And the simple answer is no. Um, some of our most successful students from Brinsbury are from a non-farming background just had an interest, came to Brinsbury, enjoyed it, and then really, um, really excelled in their field. Um, so, you know, we can help you out with contacts in the industry, work experience, and a lot of this level three students, especially by the end of the course, are, end, are generally working for either contacts of ours or for the people that they did work experience with. On the next slide, please, Doug. So uh, this is just a small sniff of some of the past students from Brinsbury. So on the far left, you've got Chloe there. So Chloe finished uh, about a year ago at the college. Uh, she now works on a large sheep and arable farm in uh, near Chichester. So they have something like 2000 ewes. So she does lambing, uh, she does daily checks, she does uh, weighing, um, veterinary medicines, anything he's doing. Uh, and then in the summer, she's sometimes driving tractors on corn cart. So a really nice varied job. Uh, the second one is Sophia. So Sophia was a student with us for about three years. Um, she, so again, worked through the ranks, come from a non-farming background. Uh, and then we got a work experience on a dairy farm just north of Worthing, uh, where she currently works now. She, she loves the job. Um, her employer loves her too. Um, so she's got real potential and with you know with this industry there is room for you to grow and progress uh, the next one there is Barney so uh, Barney is a farm manager uh, Barney was with us about probably eight nine years ago now um, he went off when he finished Brinsbury and went to university he got a degree in agriculture at Siren Sester at the Royal Ag uh, University um, he then, from there, went on to a um, management training 
uh, degree course with um, a company called Velcor. So he was a man, trainee manager. Uh, he was an assistant manager on a farm, on several different farms, working around the uh, west of, uh, southwest of England. Um, and then has just recently just moved just, I think, just north of London uh, to come near to his family. So he's been uh, a farm manager on several large farms um, and thoroughly enjoys his job. And then the last one on the right hand side is uh, Rod. So uh, Rod is a local um, guy from Chichester. Uh, I think we taught his brother um, earlier on. Um, uh, before Rod came to us. And then he works for a local contractor running out of Midhurst. Uh, so he does lots of agricultural stuff, but also um, some amenity stuff. So he goes off and reseeds um, polar pitches um, and really enjoys his job. So, um, Opportunities in the in the industry. So um, the current industry has a massive labour shortage. So the industry needs workers from um, all levels, from the very bottom all the way through to management. Um, but as we say, you don't just have to end up working on um, a farm, you know, bedding up cattle or looking after sheep or milking cows. You can go off into other um, areas within the industry. So um, in the past, I think there's something like 200 career paths from the industry, but this is where you can start. So, you know, you can go off to be a grain broker, uh, you could be a crop specialist, um, you know, a salesman, um, a livestock auctioneer, um, but also you can then also work on a farm or just, you know, be a general sort of herd manager, flock manager, if you wish to. So uh, just to let you know, uh, myself uh, and Richard are both study programme leaders. I'm the study programme leader for uh, level one and level twos. Uh, now we uh, use, just to let you know, uh, if you, whatever course you do up and down the country at whatever college, uh, you will need to uh, be working towards getting your maths GCSE uh, and English GCSE at a grade four. Um, so embedded in our courses, if you haven't already got those, you will actually be retaking your GCSEs as well, but just the maths and the English, because uh, that's a government incentive just to improve uh, people's maths and English up and down the country. So for a level one course, it is a very practical course. Uh, we use uh, City and Guilds as our examining body and Laser Leap. Now, the course is about 80% practical with about 20% theory. You will work on the commercial farm. You will be working with the cows, the sheep, the pigs, with whatever we are doing. So if we're carving, you're carving. If we're lambing, you're lambing. If we're shearing, you're shearing. And it's also the same with machinery operations. But obviously, the levels of those just vary on what course you're doing as well. Um, so you will also be moving, handling livestock, estate skills, machinery operations, um, some teamwork, some health and safety uh, linked in there as well, but we link all that back to the industry uh, and then you can gain your, um, your level one from that. But your level one is about two and a half days a week, just depending on what GCSEs you need to take uh, as well. The level two, uh, we use City and Guilds, is actually a technical certificate. Now, uh, with that, it's about 60% uh, practical with about 40% theory. Um, still, it is great insight into the industry. It gets you hands on, you understand how we do it, why we do it, the timings of things, um, and just about the importance of this industry in this country. Um, it you will still cover health and safety, livestock production, crop production, um, working in the industry, estate skills and tractor operations, uh, and then you will actually gain your level two from that. There are it, um, there is an exam that you do have to sit, it's a multiple choice exam, uh, and there are some synoptic uh, practical assessments that you have to do that we have to do at set times of the year. But you will only do these once we both myself and Richard feel that you're up to standard. And then uh, the highest level we do is the uh, level three. So this is an advanced technical diploma. So this is a year course, but can then lead on to a second year, which is the extended diploma. Uh, these have similar modules to the level two. So you'll be doing um, dairy, beef, sheep and potentially pig production, machine operations, estate skills. Um, but that will be in a lot more detail. So there will be a lot more analysing, evaluation, um, the exam. We have synoptic exams, um, synoptic assessments. 
Um, and these, again, are in a lot more depth. So, for example, uh, it has one exam in it. And instead of multiple choice, it will be more discussion uh, questions. Um, you also, on top of that, do things like plant science and business. So with the level three, it's comparable to doing at three A levels. So it's at level three. Um, this can give you the entry requirements for university. So um, some people do A levels in university and agriculture. Some people do um, the vocational side, which is what we do. So it depends on if you are a, you know, a kinesthetic learner, if you learn by touching and feeling. Um, but we try and make it as practical as possible. Um, but the higher levels you go up, the more theory you have to do. So we say roughly about 60% theory to 40% practical. So Sharon, would you mind sharing the video now of the College Farm? So guys, this is the uh, Brinsbury estate here, just a, a very small glimpse of uh, what you would sort of be working with and where you would be working. One of the classrooms uh, that you would be gaining the knowledge to work uh, within the industry. Then we're moving to outside where our lambs from this year, from March this year, have been penned up. And basically those lambs will then go through our system. Uh, that's a mobile handling system uh, to be graded that you will see shortly. So they come up the race. Now, if you can see, they've got a yellow ear tag in their left ear. Now that actually has got a little microchip in it that gives us all of the data uh, for that animal. Now, as you can see, the weigh scales there were at 38 kilograms. Now, Richard is now feeling across the shoulders, then across the back, and he is basically feeling for the confirmation of that animal. So he's basically feeling the fat content on that animal. Now you can see a small um, table that's just come up. Now we are looking for R, um, sorry, R4L. Uh, now that is well within the green of that, and it's basically like a traffic light system. So green is good, uh, and green is what the markets want. So as the sheep come through, they individually go in, they are, the, the ear tag is scanned as they've gone in, so we can record the weight, and then Richard um, sets it again, and then the next one comes in. We all, you can see our sheep are now grazing, uh, but we're using strip grazing, so we're maximising um, the, the grass potential, and because of how hot the summer was, we were able to make the grass last longer. Now we've moved on to the uh, dairy cows. We've got the Sussex bull standing in the middle of that lot. Um, you've got the, the, about 70% of the cows there are laying down cudding. Uh, so they are basically making us milk. We've got dairy short horns and air shears. And then we move on to uh, just a quick shot of the uh, cows uh, coming into the parlour, uh, making their way down. There's some students there getting ready to do um, their show team because we take our animals to the South of England show, the Surrey show. Uh, and then we've got some students doing some field uh, work there uh, back last year. And then some cultivations uh, just to finish there, uh, preparing the ground last autumn, uh, ready for um, putting grass back into the ground, ready for uh, spring. Now, guys, we've just just moving on. Hang on just a second, just while the computer catches up with us. It's not letting me move on a slide. I don't know what's going on. Hang on just a second, I will just retry something. There, we'll just try again. It 
it's not letting me move on to the next slide at all. Um, so if we just go, we'll just carry on, just a slight technical issue here, but not, not to worry. Basically, uh, we've done our uh, video there, so that gives you a real good insight to what you would be doing and where you would be covering it. Um, and uh, the last couple of slides, uh, Richard, do you want to just go on to the, uh, slide nine for us? Yep, yeah, sure. So um, as well as at the college, you will have pastoral support. So you'll have a weekly session with your student tutor. So your student tutor will help you out with your pastoral support so they can help you out with potential funding uh, to get to college. Um, any problems you have, you can speak to them if you can't speak to us. Uh, we also have additional support. So if you've received additional support um, at school, um, we will do uh, the college will do a support interview with you and look at your needs. So, for example, if you have extra time in your exam, we will assess you. Um, and help you with that. Um, we also help you um, with um, contacts within the industry. So um, our industry is very much um, a word of mouth industry. You won't necessarily find the, you know, find your jobs um, online or in a newspaper. So um, we will help you with contacts. We will bring um, employers into the college. So we do things like a careers day where we have four or five employers come in um, and they will interview you and give you um, tips on your interview skills. Um, and generally that leads them to, con on my students with contacts for employers in the industry. So again, if they see them at a show, they go, oh, do you remember me? Yes, nice to see you. Um, and if they, a lot of those employers will then say, right, I'm looking for someone part-time. Um, I met that uh, young, young lady at your interview day. Could you pass my number on to her? Uh, and they go for interview there. Um, we also, you know, as again, some some of them and some levels um, have in-class support as well. So again, if you've had in-class support at school, uh, we will assess you and help you with that. The slides are now all back up and working. So hopefully there we go. So um, enrichment at the college on agriculture is very good. So we do a lot of trips to farms, especially at level three. So we're not just there to tell you that the way we farm is the best way. We um, need to get you out into the industry and see as many different um, ways that people can farm because uh, people farm for different reasons um, and allow you to, you know, make your own decisions. So, you know, we have a dairy herd of 100 and sort of 60, 70 dairy shortens that we mainly produce milk from grass, but we will take you to large farms with 500 cows going for a rotary parlor to um, 100 cows, high yielding, going through robots um, uh, and things like that. Um, normally, um, if it was a non-COVID year, we'd be going on a study tour. So in the past, we've been uh, to Cumbria, we've been to Shropshire, we've been to uh, Devon and Cornwall. So again, trying to get you out. And basically it's four days of just looking at farms, speaking to farmers in other areas of the country, see how they farm. Uh, and then you can see uh, on the far right hand side, um, that is one of our students a couple of years ago showing at the South England show. So if you're into showing cows, uh, you can help come and show the cows. So that's actually a student in the ring. So we pride ourselves in, in making the students show the cows because it's, it's their experience. Um, and along with that, Chichester College being a, you know, a, a very big group, there's also other opportunities. So the college uh, on their own back, uh, they go to New York, Disneyland Paris, um, there's regular trips to Thorpe Park. So there's also other things that you can um, get onto with being part of the Chichester College group. So now uh, we're going to have uh, Holly is basically going to now sort of like read out a few of your, your questions and hopefully uh, myself and Richard will be able to answer those. But if you if anyone has got any questions that, that you know, in sort of like 20 minutes time, you then think, oh, I, I didn't ask that. Um, our emails uh, are there, um, you know, take a screenshot of it, take a picture on your phone now um, and just give us an email and we will try our best to, to help you guide you um, in the correct ways. Lovely. We've got some uh, lovely questions that have come in today. I'll start off with some of the more generic ones and then I've got a couple of specific ones as well. Um, so starting off, what will the college day look like? 
So for uh, if I answer that for sort of like level ones, level twos, and then Richard could do it for for level threes as well. Um, down at the college farm, we start at nine thirty, uh, and your day will basically run until four thirty. Um, obviously with breaks and lunch uh, in between. Uh, we we try to do it that we break the day up. Uh, so Richard would teach you in the morning, uh, and then I would teach you uh, in the afternoon. Uh, now. With the level one, the level two, it's very practical. Uh, we always try to do some theory in the morning because learners tend to learn better uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, and then we will do practicals uh, in the afternoon. Uh, but we always, if there's something really interesting going on, on the farm, uh, like a vet had to come in for uh, like a, a last year, a vet came in to do a C-section on a cow. Uh, we went out and we saw it and I asked the students if they were happy, if the vet was happy that we were doing it. But it's something that we couldn't plan, but because we're on that commercial farm we can access and then Richard do you want to just say about your, your level threes yeah so level threes again as we as we said earlier there's a bit more theory involved so um you know a typical day is quite sort of you know in the morning they'll come in and do a theory so they might be doing livestock production with Doug for the morning or they might be doing plant and soil science or crops with me of the morning and then of an afternoon we try and make something get a pretty bit practical so uh, practical wise, um, you know, you might be doing machinery. So we might be teaching you to drive a tractor in the yard. So when springtime comes, you can get out and do some field cultivations. Um, we might be fixing stuff in the workshop. Um, we could be doing some estate skills. We could be out fencing in the afternoon. We could be putting gates up. We could be coppicing. Uh, we could be planting hedges. Um, um, I've also managed to um, get a welding course in this year, which is very good. Um, I can't guarantee it's next year, but I'll certainly try which the students are really enjoying. It's something a little bit extra um, than what we need to do, but it's very, very interesting. So, yeah, we try to mix up as much as we can. And the only other thing I will add to that is uh, we don't stop if it's raining. Uh, you know, we're still going outside. We're still working. These animals still need feeding, uh, moving, caring for. Uh, the field cultivation still need to happen. Um, you know, if the weather does get too bad, we have to change what we're doing. But 99% of the time, we, we've planned for that day, and that's what we will actually go out and do, and it doesn't matter about the weather. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, I've got another question here. What animals will I work with? You will mainly work with uh, cows, sheep and pigs. As we said, um, you know, we've got about 100 and, uh, 150, 160 uh, dairy cows. Now, obviously, you've got the cows and the offspring. So at the moment, we're in the, we're in the height of uh, calving. Only yesterday, we had a cow calf um, when there was a tractor lesson going on. So we sort of like had to partly stop the lesson and help them get the cow and calf in and um, just so it was ready for the weekend. Um, but yeah, in the heights of calving at the moment. And then we will sort of like, we'll have a bit of a quiet period Period where we're getting ready to get the animals in for winter so we house um, all of our animals over winter uh, and then we will be into the throes of spring before we know it then we will be in lambing uh, so you'd be working with the sheep uh, the rams the lambs absolutely everything uh, and we've also got a couple of pigs that you will work with uh, but we also visit the fa um, other farms where we haven't got all of these animals so we will go and visit a beef farm so you understand how that works as well great thank you so much um i've got a couple of questions that go quite nicely hand in hand and um, so uh, i'm nervous about working with big animals as i've never worked on a farm before does this matter and also is it worth getting some work experience on a farm before starting so if i if i answer the bit about um the, the livestock and then Richard you can then go on to the to the work experience if that's if that's good with you um, just so um, with the animals it's about building confidence now everyone has to start somewhere um, you know if you're if you're nervous around the cattle to start with you won't be in the pen with them you'd be around the outside and then I'll just build your confidence up build your confidence up build your confidence up and before you know it I've had plenty of students that have come through that have been so nervous around the large animals to start with and then they're the first ones in by the by halfway through the year because they've got that confidence they know what know how to how to act but everyone is treated the same everyone is taught exactly the same uh, and you know it's all about building that confidence uh, with the animals before you actually go in and you know for whatever reason you could be nervous of an animal uh, and we will try to overcome that as best we possibly can but it's just about communication that's what myself and Richard are here for um, you know if you're nervous around it just say you know yesterday we were doing track 
back to driving and some of the students are nervous around the big tractors it's absolutely fine so we start on the small ones and build your confidence up and then before you know it you're in the big tractors without even thinking about it and then richard do you want to go on about the work experience yeah so um work experience is part of uh, the courses of the level two and the level three so you have to do it to pass the course uh, we can help with that, but you don't have to get work experience before you start. It's a very good idea, um, especially my level threes. Are, um, the returners that come, well, the people that come up from level two to level three, I pretty much insist on them having work experience lined up, ready to go in September, because they've had a year working on our farm. But if you come from a non-farming background, you've got no contacts. Um, we don't expect you to get work experience from September. What we'd like you to do is come in. Spend six weeks with us working on the farm, doing a bit of work experience on our farm. We'll get your skills up, we'll get your confidence up. You know, we can then help you with a few contacts. And then we would expect you from sort of October, November, December onwards to be getting your own work experience. And uh, with the qualifications that we use, it's actually a, a core part of it, um, you know, to actually get work experience hours as well uh, that you then have to record. Um, and so the idea is it's making you industry ready. Uh, and that's what the industry want. They want you to to know what you're doing and how you're doing it. Great, thank you. Um, another question we've got, what PPE will I need? So uh, for, for all the, it doesn't matter what level it is, uh, it will be steel toe cap boots. Now I'd strongly suggest a pair of steel toe cap wellies as well. So we class them as sort of like work boots and wellies. Um, and the only reason I say that is when it gets muddy, it gets very muddy. Uh, and uh, you have to have a pair of overalls as well. Uh, the only thing I will say about the overalls is have them a little bit bigger, um, just because then you can get jumpers, uh, jackets and that on underneath, because uh, it's about biosecurity and health and safety as well so the idea is obviously at the end of a session um, you may have a, a practical session in the morning and then a theory session in the afternoon and obviously you take your overalls off and your clothes are still clean underneath so you, the biosecurity risk of anything is a lot less thanks for that um i've got another question here is it mainly boys on the course richard would you like to do that one yeah sure um it's it's majority boys, but it's, it's certainly not um, ninety five percent boys. Um, thinking of the level two this year, I would probably say sixty percent boys. Doug, would you agree? Yeah. Um, and then on the level three, I would probably say sixty seventy percent of boys. Um, we find sometimes the girls are better because they listen a bit more uh, and a little less um, uh, boisterous, if you know what I mean. So actually, they make for me. Uh, you know, I teach the props and track driving. They make some great track drivers. Uh, the girls over the years because um, they have sort of almost better attention to detail. So um, there will there's likely to be more boys, but it's certainly not going to be ninety five percent boys. Great, thank you so much. Um, I've got a question about levels here. So um, can I go straight onto a level three, or do I need to do the level two first? No, so um, you can go straight on to the level three. Um, so each course has different entry requirements. So the entry requirements for my level three are basically at five GCSEs at four or above that must include your maths and your English. So um, I've had many a student uh, come in with no experience in agriculture, five GCSEs with four and do extremely well. Um, if you haven't got those GCSEs, we recommend you do the level two purely because then it will give you a stepping stone to the level three. So just because you haven't got those GCSEs doesn't mean you can never do the level three. It just means you do need to do a year. We'll give you a lot of background detail that will help you then get a much better grade on your level three. And also, um, when we went back to those students, the ex-students that we were looking at, um, you know, uh, Barney, Sophia and... Um, I can't remember the other one that was on there. Um, none of them, only Rod actually came with a farming background, you know, so yes. three out of four yep. of those uh, yep. non-farming background. Yeah, um, and Barney and Sophia did the level two first, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Following on from that, we've got another question that says, if you pass the level two, are there still job opportunities? 
Yes, um, as Richard was talking about earlier about the different sort of like levels of uh, of work that are out there, you know, there are still um, those opportunities, but it's a bit like anything, um, any job you go into, you need experience in it. Um, so you're obviously never going to go straight into management um, from sort of like leaving college, you're going to have to still start at the bottom and work up. Um, but that's where if you've got the right work ethic and the right um, ways of sort of like thinking and that you will you will thrive within this industry and there is always going to be jobs within this industry because we need food i've got a couple of questions from some mature students here so um uh, does age matter and what is the cost of the course and is there funding at all now, if I do about the sort of age thing, uh, last year, my oldest student on the course was 50. Uh, and that was a level two. Um, it really doesn't matter about age. Um, majority of the students are aged between 16 to 19. Um, but everyone wants to learn different things especially in this this um year that we're in at the moment you know people want to go back in and you know totally retrain and come into different uh things it really doesn't doesn't matter uh, about age um there is there is funding uh, out there um richard will talk a little bit about funding in just a second because he's, he's good at that and uh, the other thing uh with it is depending on the the fees for the course will change ever so slightly every year. Uh, at the moment, to do a level two, uh, if you are over 19 and haven't already got uh, the equivalent of a, a level two, I think it's uh, just over £2,000 for the year. Yeah, and um, the level three, I believe the cost of the level three is some just over £3,000. So um, again, um, it's whether you have a previous level three and your age. I think, again, you can't quote me on this, but it's something like 24 or 26. If you're over that age, you have to pay for that course. Um, funding wise, um, you can get funding from the NFU Trust Fund. So I sit on a committee that um, uh, gives funding for students. So um, they generally will give out um, to people doing the course somewhere between 500 and 1,000 pounds per year. Um, you just have to apply. Um, it's not means tested. Um, it's it's how much they think you are going to go off and work into the industry. So um, the NFU Trust Fund is, I think it's the second biggest in the country in West Sussex, uh, and it is for only people from West Sussex. Uh, just one more from another mature student. Are GCSE results as important? So I got a D for GCSE maths 15 years ago and went on to gain A-levels. Would I need to re retake it? Uh, no, uh, basically, it's if you are 19 and over, you don't have to retake your GCSEs. Uh, it's just it's just what the government are stating. They're just saying um, they need to bring the uh, maths and English level up of um, young people today. Perfect. Um, I think I've got time for one more question. Just before I do ask that, um, I just want to remind people that applications are open for, from next week. Um, so if you are interested, do check out our website and uh, get applying. The last question is, if the aim is for the student to get their own small holding or farm, would the college be able to help find and apply for incentives or opportunities? Um, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, small hut, not really. Um, what we would provide you is the skills to manage and run those livestock or that land. Um, we can give you um, our knowledge and opinions of what we've had over the years, um, but we're, we're, we're not in the, um, we're not in, none, none of the modules come across applying for tenancies or anything like that. Right. Well, what I'd like to say, I think we've uh, done all of the questions that have come through and thank you very much for all those questions. Uh, they were absolutely brilliant. Loads of loads of different ones uh, from different angles and uh, what have you. Uh, if uh, you do want to contact us, please uh, take note of the, the details that are on your screen at the moment. Uh, and obviously, if you want to revisit this uh, broadcast that we've done, it won't probably won't be on there you know within the next sort of 10 minutes you know uh, it will be on there by monday uh, and it will be sitting there that you could then go back through uh, and uh, 
see and uh, uh, what, what we actually offer. Uh, but I'd like to say thank you very much uh, for attending. Uh, hopefully we've answered everything for you uh, and we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.